What's happening, party people? It's been, I guess, week two of posting my daily videos over on the Patreon site. There's a link in the description that'll take you over there. These are free videos. You don't have to pay or sign in or nothing like that. You hit the Patreon page, you let it load up, you scroll down, and you'll see daily videos. Again, I just don't want to clog up the regular YouTube side with these daily videos that people, you know, normally don't like and stuff like that on. It also helps people find the instructional videos better. And I don't have to edit them as stringently since they're not exposed to the general public. You know, people that go over there are people that know me and want to see these daily videos. So they're over there. Right now, I'm averaging about eight views per video. One of them don't have any views as far as YouTube claims, but I know it does because somebody made a comment on it. So if you want to see the daily videos, you can go over there. I've been posting uh, some decent videos over there. I got some parts off of a S60 manual, P2 manual parts. So if somebody wants to purchase those, you send me a text or email and we'll uh, work something out on that stuff. Junkyard prices are getting a little more expensive, so the stuff is not as cheap as we'd like it to be. I worked on Pepper a couple of times. Pepper started randomly stalling. I got that figured out, worked out. I finally figured out what was wrong with the AC after eight hours of working on that AC. Man, that was a chore. Then I pulled an ETM off of a V70. It had several codes, but at the end of the day, the uh, ETM was really bad. So I got some information on that over there. So I think this video has some information on that ETM as well. So here's some good stuff over there. I've been posting a lot of shorts. My average YouTube short is getting about 700 views each. I'm just really taking questions that people post on various videos and stuff and answering them in a short form. So you get my opinion in a minute or less. You know, some people like that. You cut out all the junk, straight to the point, nice clean video. So that's what I got going on. I'm about to head up here and help Tony replace the steering rack on his car. And man, let me tell you something. Mm, mm, mm. That turned into a mess. One of the subframe bushings is stuck to the frame of the car, closest to the driver's door. Couldn't pry it off, couldn't beat it off, couldn't heat it off. So, unfortunately, uh, we're probably going to end up having to cut that thing off today. But, you know, just dealing with, you know, the normal everyday challenges that fixing old cars bring to us. The t-shirt machine is back order. It's going to be another five weeks. I'm about 10, 15% donated on that. So, if you want to contribute to that go click on this channel and hit the more button at the end of the introduction statement. It'll show you ways to send me donations and stuff like that. So, or you could just contact me directly, call or text, arrange that. I appreciate your support. So that's where I'm at. I'm getting ready to wrap this up, go have breakfast and get to work. So I appreciate you all watching. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. It appears the vacuum cleaner is totally charged. The power light is no longer flashing or the recharge light, whatever it is. So I'm gonna power it on and tell it to do zigzag cleaning. Actually, it's already powered on, so I'm gonna just push this button, see if it'll start cleaning. There it is. It's on its way, folks. See what happens. Seem like it stopped already because probably the chair's in the way. I push auto, so we should just start cleaning. It's 
see how much dirt is on the floor when all this comes back. So yeah, a little bit of dirt there, a couple pieces up out of charge. I'm going to move this thing here because it likes to fall down when it's bumped. The big thing is, under my bed, man, there's a lot of dust under there. Let me show you. Had no idea all this dust was building up under the bed, so let's see how that goes. So far, it got stuck under the bed, and it powered itself off, I guess, to stop the struggle. It doesn't go over carpets very well. It kind of catches them and curls them up. I'll let you see that when it comes back over to this little floor mat, if it makes it over here any time today. But it's doing pretty good going around sharp curves. Hey, it's going to pick something up. Yep, it made it. Picked it up. Maybe it's not going to get back on that little cart. There it goes. Ah, it turned around this time. It even struggles on flat floor carpets. You can put little entryway blockades for it not to enter certain areas if you want and it'll just hit those things and turn around they need to be three inches high i think here it is back at that carpet that it didn't make it up it made it up the first time but not these last two times found the vacuum cleaner powered off again under my side of the bed i'm not sure what's going on there but we're going to see how much dirt is picked up. It did the bathroom, the kitchen, dining area, and the bedroom. Oh, it's only about half full. If that. Oops. Let me go get that and put that back. Set it in the living room and turn it back on. Turns out it's running out of power. It didn't make it back home. So I'm going to push home, see if it'll go there. And you see the plug light is clear instead of green so let's see if it makes its way back home to the charging station nope didn't make it i'm gonna put it about five feet in front of it and try it again uh -oh. look like it's gonna go park on the charger Woohoo! it is not vacuuming it's this draft there it is. Parked itself. Seems that the battery is proclaiming to be fully charged after only two and a half hours. It's supposed to take five at any rate. I'm going to take it and dump it in the living room and let it clean around there and see if it'll return home before it runs out of battery juice. I'm going to use the remote to direct which way it'll go to get it to the living area and hopefully that will help it don't have enough room to turn around
didn't work guiding it around with the remote so I just brought it in here now it's acting like it's stuck and don't want to be so we'll see if it makes its way around here starts acting normal round two of the name change for Norma we went to the BMV they took care of everything we had no waiting and she is now a spinnaker a spinner <laughs> and here we are folks going back for another round because there's some kind of issue with the paperwork for the new driver's license mm, mm, mm. back down here the next day man this battery from 10 years ago is really struggling to get above the next level i'm going to check the water level in it and go from there man this thing is hot to the touch bulging a little bit I think I could get these caps off so look like I got a little moisture there let me try to get this open make sure it's got the right amount of liquid in it I think there's some special liquid you're supposed to put in there so I'll check on that probably a good thing I came and checked on this man this battery charger is pretty warm too it's a mess I put it back on this one just to double check its charge level. It looks like it may still be full. So in this battery, it looks like that chamber is empty. The next three or four have liquid in them and that one's pretty low as well. So I'm gonna get the fluid, fill those up, put the cap back on. I was able to pry it off and see if that helps this situation. I'm going to modify this ETM, but I looked at it, and it kind of looked like somebody had already been in there. It had some gray silicone. I thought, man, somebody's already been in here and done this modification. I looked on the end. Those things looked original, so I said, well, maybe not. So I cracked it open, and I don't see no evidence of the modification being done. I don't know if this ETM has been worked on before, but something's going on. Anyway... I got the kit to do the modification, so here I go. This white label ETM has some different kind of sealing in there. That stuff comes out a lot easier and cleaner. So that's where I'm at. I had to clean this pin off over here. But man, I kind of like that stuff. Don't have anything to break that loose, so I'm going to pry it open. And hopefully that'll break it loose and then get to work on this side. Having a little bit of issue with this throttle body because it seems to be binding up. When I turn it, it goes freely up to about that percent, which is maybe 20, 30 percent. Then it's sticking. It shouldn't be sticking. It should bounce back at any level. That's fully open. And it takes a little bit of effort to get that thing closed. Look, it's not going closed until it gets down to about 25%. So I gotta figure out why this is binding up. Possibly spray it with some throttle body cleaner and see if that frees it up. But for some reason it is jamming up. And that may be why it's having the issues it's having. Not totally the sensor's fault, but I'm gonna replace the sensor, but I need to get this freed up as well. I'm going to go get my cutting tool and cut this shaft off about an eighth of an inch above this threaded area so that I can work on getting this magnet on there. So I got to cut that off too. This thing is sticky. I can't even get it to turn open past that amount with the shaft. So that's it. Nothing too involved in this video. Man, messing with that vacuum cleaner is a learning process. This one isn't smart enough to find its way home after it's been running around. It just keeps running around till it dies. Then you pick it up, toss it on the charger, and, and that's that. The uh, ETM on this V70R was really messed up. You know, I don't know if the ETS light has ever been out on this vehicle since we've had it. We've had this vehicle probably close to three years. The ETM's always been a little issue, but I'm learning that part of the issue is these 
throttle plates binding up. And I learned that over there hanging out with Alex. Alex showed me one that was binding up. So now I know what to look for when I open those things up. And that could be a problem. If that thing is starting to bind up, it's got a magnet inside of it and the linkage system where it just gets corrosion in there, starts swelling up, then it starts binding up. And you're going to have to crack that thing way open to correct that or just replace that ETM. So putting a contact unit on there, contactless unit on there, is not going to fix it. You got to replace that thing. So that's what I ended up doing on this car, and it's running like a dream now. So that's where we're at. I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. And if you want to watch more of these type of daily videos, head on over to the Patreon site. Now, I made a video that I was goofing off on it, so I kind of flagged it as adult content because I was doing something I thought was funny. And that video is not getting a lot of views. It's only got about 280 views or something like that. So you probably have to log into your account as an adult to see that video and enjoy that content. So I may go audio dub that video just so uh, it'll be available to the public in general. But I was just having a good time. And uh, it's had a couple of experience working on a couple of cars with a couple of people. And we were laughing about something that I was doing. It was just hilarious. So I incorporated that in this video instead of editing it out. And it was, uh, it's fun. Anyway, uh, that's that. Hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I trust that you found some information that was either useful or entertaining. So go ahead and hit the like button. And if you would like notification of future videos that I post, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. You can follow me on other social media apps by looking for at Robert DIY. Some form of that should bring up the other channels that I have on places like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. If for some reason you need some more personal help, go to my website at robertdiy.com and use the phone number that I have posted there to send me a text message or you can email me. If you have questions or comments, please make a comment below. And if you'd like to make some kind of financial contribution to what I got going on here, go to my channel and hit the more link at the end of the introduction statement, and it'll show you different ways that you can support me financially. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.